Hi guys, good evening and welcome back to another review of my Doctor Who Marathon. Last time we did the review on the Web Affair, a truly magnificent story. Yes again, a same as the Enemy of the World, but now we're moving on to a more unconventional review because I wasn't originally planned to do this review. I was set out to plan to do the review on the invasion, but something occurred to me when I went to HMV on Friday that I really wanted to review this story and I only saw the story once and I decided to give this story a second chance like all other Doctor Who stories when you've first watched it you think it's always too confusing but I really wanted to give this story a second chance because when I rewatched it I really felt the whole concept and all the characters and the whole point of this whole story as well so today's review is a quite weird and hopefully if you apologize if my explain if my explanations don't make sense then I apologize but I'm gonna try to not let that happen and so today's review is the mind robber which I have to say is one of the weirdest Doctor Who stories that I've ever seen in my entire life I mean I really do like fantasy and in, in, in its entirety but putting it into a Doctor Who story and making fiction come to life and that's really a big challenge and that's what Peter Ling the writer of this whole story which took on a massive challenge and I really admire what he did and his scripting and his writing was just so spot on I really really find this story so enjoyable how can I put it it's almost like a world of fantasy a fantasy world but on the level of jokes and challenges and mythological creatures and characters and it was just really fascinating just to watch it fiction coming to life thinking it might be real or whether it's fictional you know stuff like that it's really really confusing but also very delusional as well which I had to really rewatch it to make sure I fully understand it and so let's get into the review of The Mind Robber written by Peter Ling Escaping from a volcanic eruption on the planet Duskus, I think that that planet is from the Dominators from the last story just before the Mind Rubber. The Doctor is forced to use the TARDIS emergency unit which takes the, air, the, the, the craft out of normal time and space and out of reality itself. The time travellers arrive on a mysterious world peopled by fictional characters Gulliver, Rapunzel, the Artigan and Sir Lancelot but also by creatures from mankind's world worst imaginings. Now, I really love the whole concept of bringing fantasy to, of bringing fantasy and fiction to life. It's just a brilliant concept, and we might as well go through all of the fictional characters in this. I really like. I mean, the main cast in this is basically Jamie, Zoe, the Doctor, and you've also got the Master, which not to be confusing with the Master from all of the other Doctor Who stories. The Master, as in the Master in this story, I I would call him the Master of Fiction, and so he was set out in this story from Episode One and was really confusing and possessing the Doctor's mind, trying to almost convert him, or you know, trying to you know. How can I put it, really? Make him delusional, really, or how all of this world is completely based on one fiction. He has no idea what's going on. And so he was really having a great fun, having great fun with challenging the Doctor with all these jokes and challenges and mythological creatures. And I really saw he was a quite sinister um, master. Although he was quite, you know, fine. And, you know, sometimes he was having a really lovely conversation with the Doctor in episode 5. But also, he was really having a very serious role of whether the Doctor was refusing to become a part of fiction he was completely like right you will obey my orders and you will become a part of fiction you will take on my position and so of how he was you know possessed by the master brain controlling the land of fiction and really controlling the whole entire world of this fiction fantasy and he was really sinister and he was very almost felt in control of the, of the entire world of fiction controlling all these mythological creatures the characters and everything around it including the um, the toy soldiers as well and also the white uh, robot uh, robots as well I thought the white robots in episode one were really great and they are very 
very underrated in my opinion. Although they don't look as brilliant, I mean, I thought um, the um, design of them and also the acting of them did look a bit tatty at first, but I really do like the white robots, but I think the toy soldiers, they look more realistic and they fit more in, into the fancy and fictional surroundings, which really, if you think about toy soldiers, you really think about fiction and fantasy. I just really love that. And, and the way they walk and the way that, you know, they have the, you know, w w when you actually see one, you know, face to face it just looks so creepy and just they look so sinister whenever you're looking at one it just completes it creates that kind of sinister very creepy feel around this entire world of fiction i have to say that patrick Trout is very great in this but also this story is, is very very silly and although many people would probably rate this so low because of its silliness i really like the silliness in this because it just makes it such a fun and enjoyable story and you don't have to say really many negatives although many negatives would say about some of the uh, fictional characters are worthless but i wouldn't say all of the characters are worthless i would say maybe rapunzel is because she only just appeared very briefly and sort of um other fictional characters as well like sir lancelot blackbeard the pirate and all these other fictional characters as well they only appeared in episode five where the doctor and the master were having a battle of wits with you know having a go and having to well basically using fiction to their own advantage and creating you know and trying to defeat each other with their own minds of using fiction and so it was a really intense battle and i really do like episode five although many well i have to say that the episodes in itself they are actually really really short i mean almost like the dominators that was cut down to a five parter originally become was planned to be a six parter but instead became a five parter with this this is almost like a 20 minutes story but they made it five episodes long and so it really was a bit different having a 20 minute episode and then having five other stories to go with it because i believe patrick Trang was becoming a bit you know tired and he wanted a bit of a break from being from being the doctor being the role over and over again he wanted more money because he was so tired and yeah so many of the actors were very tired on thinking it was a very long scheduling but I really like the shorter episodes because it really puts off m more cliffhangers which re just really intrigued me and speaking about the cliffhangers I really do like the cliffhanger of where the TARDIS completely exploded in episode 1 or where the TARDIS console is moving around in a you know distant space and vast space with jo Zoe and Jamie hugged onto it and like Zoe screaming and then you see the Doctor just circling around in the darkness just feel that that is just so atmospheric and very creepy Another one which I quite liked was the unicorn which was charging towards the Doctor, Jamie and Zoe. And I really thought that having a unicorn in Doctor Who was very silly. But it's also a first time ever for a unicorn to appear in Doctor Who. And although the, the idea of the unicorn was quite difficult to do because mo many of the producers and many of the directors said it was a very difficult challenge in order to create the unicorn in the first place. And so although they did it really successfully, it was such a great cliffhanger. And I have to say that Patrick Trowin did have the, the kind of silliness, but also playing the you know, cosmic hobo in his story, playing morely like a clown, a very silly character. But also he has his seriousness within episode one and episode five, having all this, you know, serious mind on how to resist, you know, the menacing voice talking in his mind. And so it was basically like the battle of fictions, really, in episode five, which I really, really do like. Zoe, for me really completely this was almost like a test for her because she was basically a, what i thought of her character initially when i first saw her was that she knew more about facts and believing that whatever she saw was completely real no shadow of a doubt it was completely real but this was a very difficult challenge for her to to see if she could cope on whether if she looked at a minotaur or a medusa she would believe that that is real and the doctor was trying to convince Zoe that no, it's not real, it's fiction. You've got to believe me, it doesn't exist. It's also a really difficult challenge for Zoe, thinking that all of the things that she sees, it do it doesn't exist. It's not real. 
And so that was a very difficult challenge for Zoro, which I quite think that she is a kind of a brainiac, a very geeky kind of, you know, character in Doctor Who. But she is really great, I have to say. But she also had some great heroic moments when battling Dukakis, which, again, another fictional character, which sort of saw as very a heroic and very servant towards the Doctor in many of the ep in episodes 4 and 5, which really helped out the Doctor in many desperate situations. I thought Dukakis was a brilliant heroic character. And most of the other um, characters as well, such as Gulliver, who played by Bernard Horsfall, he was a really great character, and I really liked the concept of reading Gulliver's Travels and just using the, the words from the Gull Gulliver's Travels book. And that was a really great concept, not using any other words, but basing it around on his novel, the, um, Gulliver's you know, Travel Guide. And that was a really, really great concept. And I think the whole concept of fiction was very confusing at times, I have to say. I did feel it, it was a bit delusional at first, having all these fantasies coming to life about fiction and all these fictional characters and fictional mythological creatures like the Minotaur, Medusa, and all these other villains, um, and, and also the Unicorn as well. Also, the unicorn as well. It was a very silly, silly story, but very realistic as well. Very surreal, but effective story, which I really, really liked. And it just so intrigued me because episode one was just so psychedelic. You had this blank, you know, background, and you could never tell whether it was Scotland or whether Zoe's hometown. You could never tell on the title screen. James was like seeing what he was supposed to be seeing. Excuse me. Basically, in the scan in episode one, they com Zoe completely saw of like her hometown. It was basically a picture of what they wanted to see initially. They wanted to see their hometown or the home country, so just Jamie with Scotland. And so they were completely baffled of how the image quit, you know, kept changing, and the doctor was trying to, you know, trying to fight with the, you know, with the talking voice in his mind, and was trying to resist it. And they had like so much pain in episode one, where they had all of like, I can't fight it, I can't fight it. It's almost like a brain freeze. Like if you have a brain freeze whenever you're having an ice cream, and you get get that brain freeze pain. Imagine if you had that brain freeze pain for eternity, forever, and you couldn't get rid of it. Think of how they thought about uh, how how they had that kind of pain, you know, killing their brains. And so that was a really, really great thing. And that really was a brilliant thing to notice. And I really do like episode two, the, the, you know, the whole, you know, the forest of words and the fiction. I just really enjoyed it. And I think um, all of the other fictional characters were really great. And I think the settings were really original. Very, very fictional, but very surreal story. And I have to say that many of the characters in this were really, really brilliant. Especially Jamie, which, um, not, was, unfortunately, Jamie, interestingly, had a second actor who replaced him in episode two. Because in episode two, when they were filming for it, Jamie, or Fraser Hines, the actor who played Jamie, got chick was in got infected with chicken pox. And so, unfortunately, he couldn't play Jamie in episode two. And so, they had to find a replacement for Jamie, but they had to rewrite him out of the story for episode two. And so, basically, he... Basically, like, a red coat, completely one of his enemies from his past, completely shot him, and he was, like, basically, like, a, like a cardboard figure. And he was trying his best, trying to get out of the situation by moving, but he, well, he couldn't. He was, like, a plastic figure. And so, and also, he had his face wiped out as though he had no face at all, but then the Doctor was trying to, you know, trying to match up, the, you know, the correct face and the correct nose of Jamie, but then it became such a good different actor. And then a new face, you know, completely was on his face. And then, therefore, another actor was playing Jamie. And, therefore, he had to carry on the role as being Jamie for episode two. And then, back in episode three, when Fraser Hand was, you know, finally, you know, well, very well and recovered from his chicken part illness, he, um, the actor, who I believe his name was, Fraser Jones, I believe his name was, and Hainsen, I think his name was, I can't remember his name, I'm terrible on names, but I believe that he, his character, or Jamie, got written out of his actor again, and then brought back Fraser Hines, which might work with the Doctor trying to match up correctly, Fraser Hines' face. And so that was a really great concept, on, a very intriguing concept, ingenious, on how to write out an actor and bring the actor back in again from whether having a sickness or something. That was really ingenious. And Peter Lang did a really fantastic job on, on writing this whole story, because... 
when you're trying to write fictional stories, you're trying to make it so realistic, but it becomes such a challenge just to include all of these fictional characters and mythological creatures, just to convince the whole audience that this may be real, but it's all fiction. And it was one scene where the Doctor was like explaining to Jamie and Zoe that whenever somebody writes an incident uh, um, that has already happened, that is history. But when the writing comes first, that's fiction. And that's all pointed to mind of that the Minotaur was made up, the Medusa was also made up, Gulliver was also made up. And so that really pointed to mind to the whole audience that this story or the whole entire settings are complete fiction. And it was just so brilliant, and I just really ad admired the whole acting job of everybody here as well, in the whole story. Especially the children, of also because they like to have like a little laugh in episode 2. But also they appeared in episode 5 again, which also laughed at the Doctor because the Doctor was, you know, forward into, you know, going inside like a fake TARDIS. But instead, you know, got trapped by the Master in like a glass box and couldn't get out. And so, it was a very unfortunate, you know, trick that the Doctor didn't see that coming. But then they had a big battle of wits on, you know, how, you know, each mind or the Master's mind or the Doctor's mind or whether fiction was real. And so he was trying to make sure that he wasn't cast into fiction because Zoe and Jamie were cast into fiction and they were completely, you know, squashed in a book in episodes 4 Cliffhanger, which was a very strange cliffhanger. But in episode 5, they became fiction. And it, this story was just, it is, it is an, a confusing story. I have to say, it is a very delusional story. It has so many illusions in it. And it's just a really psychedelic story. And although if you hopefully, you know, understand what I'm explaining to you, I hope it all does make sense. But I really just hope that if you really understand me, you really do see that the whole point of this story was to bring fiction to life. Fictional characters to life, fantasy, the whole mythological creatures and also jokes and challenges along the way were really great. And I think all the moments and also there were some brilliant moments in this which I completely will have so much time to name all day but I know I cannot explain any much more. But I really think that the writer who wrote this, Peter Lang, Peter Link, did a fantastic job on bringing fantasy and fiction to life. That, would, that, that, that is a big challenge in Doctor Who and this is one of the weirdest and strangest Doctor Who stories of all time. And if you really want to begin in Patrick Troughton's, you know, era, then please do pick up this story because if you don't know anything about the mind robber, just watch it and just see if you can tell or whether if it's fiction or, or, or if it's non-fiction. Just tell me that in the comments down below because and also tell me your opinions on this story as well. But also as well, please do give a like and also please subscribe to my channel if you are new because I really didn't really plan to do this review at all because I really felt that this story was completely unexplainable because I really felt that it's just too confusing. I won't be able to explain anything, but I really did like the whole thing you know, fantasy of fiction, the world of fiction, the surroundings in episode two, and all of the plot, and all of the adventures uh, going through the tunnels, the Minotaur, the mythological creatures, the carcass, a very heroic character, Rapunzel, Sir Lancelot, all the other fictional characters and all these mythological creatures just really intrigued me and inspired me that fiction is a very difficult thing to do and, you know, to appear in a Doctor Who story. I think Padre Troughton was fantastic. Also, a bit a bit clownish in some times, a very silly, but it was he did have some great serious elements within his character in this and battling against the master. The master was fantastic, having this kind of sinister, you know, personality about himself, but also having a very cheerful charisma about himself. I just really liked the whole, you know, character contrasts. Jamie was brilliant, I thought his character was brilliant, and although I really liked the character who took over him in episode two, he was really great. And also as well with Zoe as well, although she was very screamy in episode 1, which I don't like to scream in episode 1 cliffhanger, but she really did a fantastic job on trying to cope on whether whether this is fiction or whether it's non-fiction or whether it's real. And so it was a really big challenge for Zoe, but I really do like her character. And, all the, and also Gulliver and all the fictional characters, I think I'm repeating myself. But I just wanted to say that David, Mah David Maloney and also Peter Ling did a fantastic job on directing, but also writing this entire story. And I think this story it is very difficult to comprise and also very tricky to understand but 
it is a bit delusional and a bit psychedelic and a bit surreal, but it is a real effective, great story. And I really enjoyed it. If I had to give it a rate, I would have to give it a 9 out of 10 because it is just a fantastic story. And after watching this, I really was fascinated with all of fiction and anything to do with mythological creatures and whether judging that whenever the next thing I see is it fiction or if it's non-fiction. So that really just had a, such a great feel and it was a very fun, silly, but very great and atmospheric but also very surreal, effective story, which I absolutely loved. It was just so brilliant. I have to just, I just really enjoyed the story so much. And although I didn't originally plan it, I really, hopefully, I really gave out all of the information that I did on this review. But also, guys, thanks for watching for this review. Please do give a like, comment, but also subscribe to my channel if you are new. And so the next review will be the review on the invasion. But hopefully, I do have some other reviews that I might do, maybe in the near future, maybe on some books. And so you never know. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching for this review. And I will see you guys very soon for the review on the invasion. So see you guys soon.